You know, like most anglers, including myself, your first introduction to fishing probably included some type of bobber. And that bobber usually had a spring on it, was attached to your line, and was adjustable up to the length of your rod. You know, I grew up fly fishing on the Asaba River. That's how I learned to fish. We would go to the lake a couple times a year because Grandma Valentine loved bluegills. And we would take our bamboo cane poles, some lines, some Carlisle bobbers, bobbers with the spring. Dad would put the spring on, uh, get our bobber, move it as far as he could. And if we had an eight foot cane pole, we could only fish eight foot deep because you couldn't lift that bobber any uh, out of the water if it was fishing any deeper. It had to be at least the length of the rod or shorter. That's the way bobber fishing used to work with fixed bobbers. Now, that can be effective, it can be fun, and man, how many fish have we caught off the end of the dock and have actually introduced our kids or grandkids to fishing because of that. But slip bobbers are different. Because slip bobbers have a hole in the middle that actually allows the line to slide through, we can adjust this bobber to fish at any depth that we want. Uh, at a stop, at a bead, at a leader, and you're ready to go fishing. Now, bobber fishing sounds like it's an old technique for just young kids, but I'll tell you what, if you pay attention, what we're going to teach you here in this segment, we're going to talk about how to use bobbers to extract big walleye from the weeds, how to rig up, how to pick the right bobber, and everything you need to be an effective bobber fisherman to catch more walleyes out of the weeds. Stay tuned. Can't wait to help you become a better slip -bobber. So what exactly is a slip bobber? When we say slip bobber, what do we mean? Well, we mean a bobber, right, that actually slips or slides on your line. We're going to talk about how to rig all this a little bit later, but that's what a slip bobber is. Remember, our old-fashioned bobbers would hook on with a spring, and you would be stuck to a specific depth. That's all the deeper you could do, and you couldn't fish that bobber any deeper than your rod was long. And actually, I'm going through my bobber box. I actually don't even have an old-style bobber because all I fish now are slip bobber. So a slip bobber is designed to slip or slide up your line. Again, we'll talk about how we adjust the depth and how we rig it a little bit later, but just understand that the difference between a regular bobber or fixed bobber and a slip bobber is the ability for this bobber to slide with your line through the middle, which allows you to adjust the depth to any depth you want. Look at, you can honestly fish a bobber 100 feet deep with a six foot rod using a slip bobber. So that is the uh, way a slip bobber works. The advantage, again, is we can fish any depth we want, we can quickly adjust the depth, and we can fish a lot deeper than we can with a fixed bobber. So a slip bobber, unlike a traditional fixed bobber, is just a bobber that slips or slides. The line slides to the middle and the bobber slips or slides up that line, allowing us to adjust the depth and fish deep depths, any depth that we want that we can't do with a fixed depth bobber. So let me go through my slip bobber box here and I want to talk to you about some options um, that we have because like anything fishing, uh, it's not just a simple, that's the answer. There are multiple pieces to this slip bobber puzzle uh, if you will. So I'm going to pull out a few different bobbers here um, and kind of show you um, how we can actually rig this a little bit different and the different options we have for rigging a slip bobber. So let's start with what I would call a standard slip bobber and that is just a traditional straight uh, Carlisle float, right? We've all seen bobbers like this. Again, we usually fix, fish them with a fixed spring where we could actually uh, attach that to line and I did actually find one. So this is what we used to have, right? This spring that used to attach to our fishing line and that would hold the bobber in one spot and we had to kind of open that spring and adjust it. We'd wrap our line inside that spring and it would be done. Slip bobbers, again, like we told you earlier, slide up and down your line. But here's a few different options. Uh, this is kind of a, a cigar style uh, Carlisle bobber, if you will. Um, traditional, smaller uh, stem, more of a cigar shaped stem, if you will, a thinner stem, pulls under the wire a little bit easier than a bulb does, um, but just a great option that you should have in your box. Next, we go to a little bit thicker. This is actually a, a true Carlisle bobber. Um, this is that kind of bulb that we're all used to seeing 
How many of us grew up catching bluegills underneath a fixed depth Carlisle bobber? Probably all of us, right? But this is a slip bobber, so the line can go through this, but we still have that same shape. We're gonna talk about bobber shapes uh, a little bit later and why they're important. Um, but first of all, just kind of understand the shapes we have. Then we have a little bit bigger ball, a little bit bigger Carlisle bobber, a little bit uh, more massive of a ball, more flotation. Then we can go to a Carlisle uh, with a little bit bigger ball that actually has a weight that allows us to cast a little bit further uh, and it kind of helps with rigging a little bit. Then we go to what we call center sliders and these are more of what we would call cigar bobbers. These actually put a lot of the bobber below the water. We'll talk about why that's important in just a second. And this actually helps the bobber stay put. So if you're fishing in wind, fishing in current, this bobber will actually stay down and it actually doesn't get pushed around by the wind as much as this bobber that floats a little bit higher does. These are center sliders, a little bit more sensitive than our traditional uh, bulb style bobbers are. And then we have a couple lighted bobber options. This is a lighted bobber option. You put a little uh, battery in here. It lights up at night fishing. It's got a hole down here so it'll slide through. So instead of the line going through the middle like most bobbers do, the line will go through uh, the bottom, there's a hole right here to go through. We're going to use the same setup, same bobber stop, but it just gives a little bit different way that it hangs in the water as opposed to go through in, going through uh, the stem. So, a couple different bobber options. Now, why are these a big deal? Let's back up a little bit. The bigger the bulb is, the more bobber we have, the more, more buoyant it's going to be. We can put heavier weight on it. It's easier to see. We can do a lot of different things with a bulbulous bobber. As we want a bobber that we want to stay in place, maybe we don't want it to get blown away by the wind, we will go to a center slider where most of that bobber is actually under the water. All we're going to see on this is just that orange piece. And we're going to talk about rigging a bobber in a minute, and it's very, very important. All we're going to see is that orange piece. So there's not a lot of bobber to be pushed by the wind. It stays in place. Conversely, if we want to drift the bobber up to a weed edge or to a rock pile, which sometimes we do, we're going to want to pick a bobber with a bigger bulb. That bulb is buoyant. It allows the wind and current to catch it and actually move the bobber away from our boat. So a couple different styles. Uh, I think you need to have a, a, a couple different sizes of each. Uh, the center slider, uh, the traditional Carlisle bulb bobber in a couple different sizes. And then also make sure if you want to fish at night, you've got a few lighted bobber options to help you uh, see that bobber at night. But that's some basic bobber options, the Carlisle bulb style or the center slider. Both have a purpose, both do things a little bit different. Um, make sure you have a few of those in your box in a couple different sizes and you're ready to go to become a good bobber fish. Okay, so let me show you how to rig a slip bobber. The first part of this is we need some way to stop the bobber from sliding up and down the line and to stop at a specific depth. And that is what we do with what we call a bobber stop. Now there are a couple different options. There is a rubber option, and then there is my favorite option, which is the nylon string option. Now I buy these. You can buy them in, in bags of uh, three, six, 20, I buy them in bags of 25. And what it is, it's a small tube. You can see that here. It's a small tube with a slip knot tied on onto it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see the, hopefully you can see the yellow string. That's tied onto this tube with a slip knot. And what we're gonna do is take our fishing line from our rod, we're gonna Slide that line through the tube. And then we're going to pull some fishing line through from our rod. And we're just going to, towards the rod tip, slide that knot off of the tube. Now it's on our line and throw the tube away. Then we're gonna take the knot and pull both ends really, really, really tight. We're gonna pull them as tight as we can pull them, okay? Now I don't have any, I forgot to grab a pair of clippers so I can't, clip this off, but what I would do traditionally is clip those ends off really, really, really tight. I'm going to use my built-in clippers that my dentist hates when I use. And now we've got a bobber stop. Now that stop slides up and down the line. 
See how easy it moves? So here it is. So now this is how I adjust how deep my bobber is, is by moving my bobber stop. So I put my bobber stop on first, and because that's so small, that can actually go right onto the reel. So there it is right there. That can go right onto the reel. So I can set this 100 feet, reel onto my reel, let line out, let that line come out, the, the weight of the uh, sinkers on the bobber pulls it through, this pulls through the line guides, stops the bobber at 100 feet. Really, really cool. So I can set this. So I got my bobber stop first, then I'm going to put on a small bead, about a four or five millimeter bead, or you can, you can actually use a crawler harness bead. It doesn't matter that the bead is a little bit bigger. That won't hurt at all. And I'm going to try to find the hole in this little bead. And again, you guys get to laugh at me <laughs> a little bit as the old guy with bad eyes tries to find the hole uh, in this little bead. Let me see if I got a bigger, <laughs> a bigger one. And I don't. Uh, the lighting is perfect here for doing camera work, but it doesn't give me a lot of overhead light to actually see. So I'm going to slide that bead on. Do I have it? I do have it. So I put my bobber stop on, put my bead on. What that bead does, that just helps stop my bobber. Then I'm going to pick whatever bobber I want to do. We're going to use this Carlisle bobber here. I'm going to slide the line through the top into the bobber and then what I do is I push a little bit of line in here so it goes through and then I kind of suck it out. So there we go. So there's our bobber, right? So now we got my bobber stop. So there's the bobber stop. Got my bead, got my bobber. So now what happens, this bobber goes in the water, it gets pulled down and it floats and it goes up to the stop and that's where it stays. That's how deep it fishes. If I want to fish a little deeper, I just take my bobber stop I grab my fishing line and I just pull my bobber stop deeper. When I fish shallower, I just pull my bobber stop down. Man, how cool is that, right? Instant changeability and I can get exactly any depth I want. Then once I've got that rigged up, I tie on a really small size 10 or 12 live bait swivel. I tie that onto my main line. And then we'll add the end of that leader I will lose my teeth, I won't be able to fish. So now I tie on my leader, and then on the end of that leader, I'll show you how what we've got here. We have got a completely rigged slip bobber. Oh, come on, really? Completely rigged slip bobber set up, and old eyes are not fun. Dad, I apologize for all the times I laughed at you when you couldn't tie a knot. So now we got a swivel, and on the end of that swivel, I like to fish a small jig, usually about a 16th or 8th ounce jig, usually a 16th ounce, okay? So that's our slip bobber. So here's what we got. Main line coming from our rod. Bobber stop. Nylon bobber stop. A bead. Our bobber. A swivel. A leader. And a jig. That's our slip bobber setup. So it's going to get in the water just like this. Let me slide the bobber stop down. It's going to sit in the water just like that with our jig hanging down. Our slip bobber is going to slide up to the bobber stop. We're going to cast it out or drop it over the side of the boat. This is going to pull through. The bobber is going to pull through all the way up to the stop. Now we're done. That's the depth we're fishing. And that depth can be two feet, three feet, six feet, a hundred feet. It doesn't matter because that bobber stop will reel up on our reel. That's the basic rigging right there of a slip bobber. Pretty easy to do. Um, stay tuned. We're going to talk about this line that I use and what you need to use to get rigged up for fishing a slip bobber. Okay, so now that we've showed you how to rig a slip bobber, let's talk a little bit about some of the dynamics. I want to talk uh, real quick about the line to use because it's pretty important that we get the right main line and get the right leader line. So let's start with main line. It's important with main line that you use one of two lines. Uh, monofilament is going to be about 90% of your bobber fishing and every once in a while you'll want to use braid. Now let's start with braid. I use a thin diameter braid about six or eight pound braid. 
if I'm going to fish a bobber deeper than about 35 to 40 feet or deeper than that, uh, which I do, and sometimes I will actually fish a bobber and a leech over deep rock piles. Uh, Hubbard Lake up in northern Michigan is a great place. You can drive around on deep flats uh, middle of the day, uh, early in the uh, evening, early in the morning. You can actually watch mayflies come out of the bottom, and you'll see walleyes actually chasing those mayflies, and you can actually set your bobber. Sometimes we're catching fish as deep as 30, 35, 40, 50 feet, uh, chasing mayfly larvae up off the bottom. When I fish deeper than about 35 feet, I like to use about a six or eight pound braid. It just takes some of the line stretch out and makes it easier to set the hook. Most of my bobber fishing though is done with monofilm. I like a 10 pound low stretch, low diameter monofilm. My favorite is Sunline Super Mono uh, in 10 pound test. That is my favorite. You can use the green or the clear, whichever one you like. Um, I like the green just because I think it disappears a little bit and I think I get a little better tint off of the sun on the green lines makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, why do you want monofilament or braid as your main line? You don't want to use fluorocarbon for your main line because remember, fluorocarbon sinks. So we want a line that floats, that stays up on the surface because the last thing we want is our bobber to be floating and our main line to be sinking in the water because that's going to kind of pull the bobber down. So we want to make sure we have a main line, either mono or, or braid, that's going to float. That's really, really important. So six or eight pound braid if you're fishing deep, 10 pound mono if you're fishing typical uh, uh, depth for slip bobbers. Now, leader, of course, we're going to tie in, like I said, another, a number size, uh, size 10. Live bait swivel, just a little small swivel. That's an important part to add the leader. And leader needs to be fluorocarbon, not because Fish can't see it, forget about that part of it. I don't think that's a big deal. The beauty of fluorocarbon is, like I said earlier, it sinks and we want this leader to actually sink because what it does is that sinking line, that fluorocarbon that sinks actually pulls your jig down faster and gets it down to the fish. So I like a thin diameter castable fluorocarbon. FC Sniper from Sunline is one of my favorites and I like to use six pound as my everyday eight pound if the weeds are really, really heavy, four pound if I'm fishing open water or the water is really, really clear, but six pound day in and day out is my favorite leader material. Leaders need to be, oh, about 24 inches. That's about right. You don't want them much longer than that because then you've got too much line as you're trying to cast um, your bobber. I will go as short as 12 if I'm really trying to cast and really trying to be accurate in the weeds. We'll talk about how to fish a bobber a little bit later. If I'm really trying to be accurate and kind of pitch my bobber into specific areas, holes, I'll shorten that leader up to about 12 inches. Uh, but most of the time I run about 24. You don't need anything longer than that, okay? So that's how we want to rig. 10 pound mono as our main line, six pound as our fluorocarbon as our main leader, as thin as four, up to eight if the weeds are heavy, down to four if the water's really clear, or fish in open water, mainline 10 pound test mono, or six, eight, even 10 pound test braid is fine if we're fishing deeper. Use the right line. It's a big part of this presentation when you're slip bobber fishing. Okay, I wanna talk about a few little special tips here that uh, really didn't fit anywhere else talking about slip bobber fishing. So. I want to talk about them here, uh, and one is weighting your slip bobber, okay? Well, let me back up. Number one is going to be the size of the slip bobber, and I think it's important. I fish, I prefer a bobber that is bigger than it needs to be. So I like to fish big bobbers, okay? Um, big bobbers are easier to cast. They're more accurate to cast. Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest advantage of a big bobber is you can put more weight on it. The more weight you can put underneath a bobber, the faster your bait gets to where the fish are. You don't want it to take 30 seconds for your bait to get down 12 feet to fish on the outside edge of a weed bed. You want to get the bobber in and get the lure down to that 8, 10, 12 feet where it needs to be. You want to get it down fast. The bigger the bobber, the more weight we can put underneath the bobber and get it down to where it needs to be. So fish a bobber, get a size that you think you might need and go one size up. Uh, this size right here, this is I think an inch and a quarter. Uh, I might have a label on one. I think maybe an inch and an eighth actually is what these are. Let me see if I have them with a tag on it and I can tell you exactly how big these bobbers are. I think I took all the tags off of them. I think they're uh, an inch and an eighth is what they are. So they're a little bit bigger than an inch round. Um, 
Oop, tag doesn't have the size on it, but that's, I like a bigger bobber, right? I think that is a big part of what we're doing. So that's number one, pick a bigger bobber. Number two, when you weight your bobber, make sure that all of your weight, all of your sinkers that you're going to add, obviously you're going to fish a jig, so that jig is going to help pull it down a little bit, but you're going to want a little more weight to get the bobber uh, weighted properly. Anytime you put a split shot onto your line to extra weight, you want to put that split shot on your main line. You never want to put any split shot on your leader. And I like it just above my swivel. So there's a weight, there's a weight, there's my swivel, and there's my jig down on my leader. So anytime you add weight, split shot, you want to make sure that it's on the main line, not on the leader. That's important. Now, again, I have a tendency to grab one big split shot first and then add smaller ones if I need more weight as opposed to a bunch of small uh, uh, sinkers. I'm an efficiency guy. One big one uh, is better, but I've got four sizes of shot here. So this is a size three, uh, size seven, which is smaller, uh, BB shot I have, and then I have uh, a size four. So I've got four different size sinkers here, all the way from a small BB, all the way up to a uh, size three. And what that does is that allows me to weight my bobber properly so it's fishing in the water properly and gets to the right depth I need it to. Now, let's talk about weighting our bobber properly. One of the biggest mistakes that bobber fishermen make is this. Pretend my finger is the water surface. A lot of bobber fishermen will take the bobber and weight it so it looks like this. All this orange is above the water. The problem with that is this. It takes a lot of pressure from a fish to break that surface tension. They can actually feel that bobber not sliding underneath the water. And that's why a lot of guys fish smaller bobbers because you don't have the surface tension. I, again, I like bigger bobbers for all the reasons I told you earlier. So a lot of guys, will, a lot of anglers will weight their bobber so the orange part is above the water. You don't want to do that. You want to put enough weight on your bobber that just the stem is above the surface. Everybody see that? Just the stem is above the surface. Now, all the bulb or all the mass of the bobber is under the water already. It doesn't take anything for a fish to pull that down. There's no surface tension to break. There's nothing for them to pull. No resistance when they pull it down. So weight your bobber so just the stem is showing. You don't want this big ball with there. You want this under the water. You want just your stem showing. The other thing of this is a lot of times when you're bobber fishing, just like when you're ice fishing for bluegills or crappies, Walleyes will come from underneath and lift your jig up. And when that happens, you'll see your bobber actually come up and lay on the surface. If you've got it like this, you'll never see that. We call it a push bite. You'll never see that. So weight your bobber heavy enough with enough weight. Just the stem is showing. No water resistance to pull it down. No surface tension to break. And if a fish takes pressure off and takes some of the weight it's pulling the bobber down off, you'll see your bobber come up and actually lay on the surface. It's time to reel up and set the hook. We'll talk about that in just a second. So there's a few special tips. Put your weight on your main line, fish a bigger bobber, make sure you've got the stem. And here's my last special tip. You know, uh, I'm looking for one because I know I have one that I've used for a demo before and I might have put it in my seminar box. One of the problems with bobber fishing when you're trying to cast a bobber is the line will get wrapped up around this bottom stem, right? So here's my bobber, here's my bottom stem. And sometimes you'll cast it on, you know, why is my bobber not going under? And all your line is wrapped up around the bottom stem. So the way I fish my bobbers is I cut that bottom stem off. That bottom stem does nothing, absolutely nothing. It has nothing, adds no value at all to the bobber. So I actually just take a really sharp knife and I cut it off. And that way I don't ever have to worry about my line wrapping around that bottom stem. So my bobber looks like that. It's the bulb, the top stem. And I'm going to weight it so just that top of the stem is showing. So there's four special tips. Use a bigger bobber than you think. Make sure that you put, you put any extra weight or any extra split shot you need on your main line. Weight your bobber enough so all the, all the mass of the bobber is under the water and just the stem is showing, right? And then just go ahead and cut off that bottom stem so you're not going to wrap around and waste a cast when you're bobber fishing. There's four special tips that are going to make you a much more efficient bobber fisher. Okay, so what are we going to need for a rod, reel, 
setup for fishing slip bobbers. Now, obviously this is spinning gear. Again, main line is gonna be about 10 pound test monofilament. This is spinning gear, but the rod you're gonna bobber fish with is, it's pretty important to get the right style rod, right? So I, you know, a fairly light, about a 2000 size spinning reel, you want something that holds enough line. So the line doesn't come off in coils, but you also want it light enough that it bounces. Now the rod is important. So I want you to look at this rod. I like rods that are at least six and a half, up to eight feet long. I've got a really cool uh, slip bobber rod that is an eight foot spinning rod that's telescoping. So it actually slides down. That's one of my favorite uh, slip bobber rods. So, but six and a half to eight feet is perfect. This does not have to be a good rod, guys. This can be a $39.99 rod. It can be uh, an inexpensive rod. Obviously, you're gonna want it to be graphite, but it doesn't need to be a high quality graphite rod because you're really not feeling any bites. And actually, you want a little bit soft because you want, if you see that, you want a strong or a soft tip. You want about half that rod to bend. Good backbone back here. This is a medium action rod with what I would call a moderate or slow tip. You want a lot of the rod to bend. That is important when you're slip bobber fishing. You want to be able to have that kind of rod. So six and a half to seven, seven and a half, eight foot is perfect. Now, why that's important is we want a little bit of reach. We want the rod long so we can keep line off the surface. And if we're doing the way we're going to show you here a little bit, a little bit later, the aggressive or active bobber fishing, you want something you can reach out and drop your bobber out away from the boat. It's important to have that extra length. The hook set is important, and that's why this soft tip is important. So when you set the hook on a bobber, you're not gonna lift it like you normally would. We call it turn and burn. So I'm gonna flip my bobber out, I get a bite, I'm going to, I'm not gonna set the hook right away. I'm gonna reel down, I'm gonna keep reeling until I physically feel the weight of that fish, and then I'm going to set the hook with a sweep Point the rod at the bobber, reel down till I feel the pressure of the fish, and then I'm going to sweep all the way sideways, 90 degree sweep, and I'm going to keep reeling the whole time. We call it turn and burn. So you reel down, you feel it, you turn your body and turn your move your rod 90 degrees the whole time you're cranking. Once you feel that fish get tight and you feel the hook set, then you can kind of slow down a little bit, but don't stop reeling, don't stop the burn part until you actually physically feel the weight of the fish and you physically can actually feel the hook go in the fish's mouth. So a longer rod, six and a half to eight foot is important. You want a medium action um, or medium power with a soft or moderate action. So you got a lot of bend in the rod and remember that turn and burn. Point the rod at the fish. When you get a bite, reel down till you feel the weight and then you're just gonna turn your body 90 degrees, bring the rod with you and crank the whole time until you feel that fish and then you've got them and you're ready to go. That's the right setup for fishing slip bobbers, being successful regardless if you're fishing in shallow water and the weeds like we're talking about today, or maybe you wanna go a little bit deeper. This setup is gonna help you catch fish every time you're slip bobber fishing. All right, so I've got everything ready to go. I've got the right bobber. I got everything set up properly. I got everything weighted right. How am I going to fish my bobber? What am I going to do? Well, first of all, let's talk about what type of bait to put on a bobber. And you can fish any kind of live bait you want below a bobber. And our good buddy, Max Wilson, and a few of uh, his buddies on the National Walleye Tour uh, have actually started fishing plastic or rubber leeches. Uh, I'm not going to cover that right now. I think it's an option we'll cover a little bit later in some uh, special addendums, if you will. But I wanna talk about live bait. Live bait is the best way to fish a slip bobber. You're fishing slow. I think having live bait is the way to go. Now, you can fish crawlers. Problem with crawlers, a lot of days is that there's any small perch around, any small bluegills, they're gonna peck the heck out of your crawler. You're not gonna have a live crawler uh, all the time. You can fish minnows. Minnows are great, especially early in the season, late in the season, when the water is really cold, minnows are a great option. But again, minnows have an issue uh, of keeping them alive and everything you have to do to keep uh, minnows healthy and looking good. So that takes a little bit of work. My favorite, number one, all-time bait on a underneath a slip bobber is a leech, without question, a leech. I love leeches. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about leeches real fast while we're here before we get into um, uh, fishing uh, the slip bobber. Let's talk about leeches. And I think it's important that you understand this. Leeches aren't just leeches, okay? Um, when you walk into a bait shop, you're probably gonna buy some leeches. And I would tell you if you are doing this seriously and you're gonna be fishing uh, slip bobbers uh, maybe for a weekend or maybe a four day trip or maybe you're tournament fishing, 
or maybe you live close to a lake that you're going to do some slip bobber fishing on, I would tell you to buy a pound of leeches. Just get a just get a pound of leeches. You can keep them in your refrigerator. They're easy to keep alive. That way you've always got leeches. If not, you're going to go to the bait shop and you're probably going to buy uh, two, three dozen leeches to get you through the day. Leech size and leech color is huge. So I classify leeches as either brown leeches or black leeches. I have seen days when brown leeches will catch fish, a black leech won't, and vice versa, black leeches will catch fish, brown leeches won't. Uh, you also want to make sure you've got a leech that's a decent size. You want to make sure you've got a leech that uh, is at least medium. So I like medium, uh, large, and jumbo. So those are the three sizes. Medium is kind of the best. Large uh, is my favorite as I get into heavier weeds and I'm fishing specific holes, a bigger profile. Uh, a medium leech will spread out to about three and a half, maybe four inches. Large leech will spread out to about five and a half, six inches, and jumbos sometimes get as big as seven. Don't be afraid to fish big leeches. Mediums and larges are going to be your everyday, but make sure you've got some browns, make sure you've got some blacks. Best way to hook a leech is if you look, the, the leeches, uh, the leech has a sucker on its rear end. That's actually not their mouth, that's actually their rear end. So what they do is they attach that sucker to a rock, they pull themselves forward, then they, they use the smaller end uh, and they suck that to the rock, that's their mouth, and then they open back up and put their other sucker on the rock. Now, before you freak out about leeches and suckers and all that stuff, bait leeches, leeches that are designed and, and raised specifically for bait, do not have teeth. They have suckers, but they don't have any teeth. They're not going to break the skin, so you're not going to get your blood sucked out of you. They're not blood suckers. They're bait leeches. They are different. Now, where do you hook a leech? Best place to hook a leech is right behind the sucker. So on the wide end of the leech, you've got that little sucker there. You want to put your hook behind that because that sucker is the strongest part of the leech. It's the most sinewy part of the leech. And you can actually catch three, four, five, six walleyes on one leech if you hook it properly. So either hook it through the sucker or I like to hook it just behind the sucker so the fish has to pull the whole thing through. Uh, and I can get three, four, five fish on one leech. If you don't want to do that, just hook it right through the sucker. But you definitely want to hook it at the wide end, at the sucker end, that's where you want to hook a leech and just let him do his little leech dance and uh, let him do his thing there when he's out uh, in the water. So crawlers work, my last choice. Minnows are a good choice, early season. Water below 50 degrees, maybe uh, I might fish some minnows, but I'll tell you what, day in and day out, even in colder water, I like leeches, medium or large leeches, brown or black. Those should be your best choice for bait. Get some of those. Stop at your local bait shop. Get some good leeches. Get ready to go. Keep them in your live well. Uh, I have a little canvas bag called a leech tamer. Uh, one of the best things you can buy. Just get a couple dozen. Throw them in that leech tamer. Throw them in your live well. You're ready to go fishing. So uh, leeches, your number one choice for bait. Anytime you're fishing uh, slip bobbers, get over the freaky part. Remember, they have suckers, don't have teeth. But get yourself some good leeches. And I promise you, a good lively leech is going to catch you a lot of fish when you're fishing a slip bob. Okay, so now we have everything rigged up. We've got our leech on there. We've got our bobber all uh, rigged up. How are we going to fish a slip bobber? Three ways. There are three basic ways to fish a slip bobber. Number one is you find a spot, you cast it out, you put the rod in the rod hole, you just let the bobber sit. That's basic bobber fish. That's probably what we all did as a kid. We've all done that off the dock. We've all done that off a boat. That's just basic everyday bobber fishing. You just find a spot, you cast it out, maybe you put two or three out, and you just let them sit. You don't do anything with them. Okay, that's number one. I'm not that kind of a fisherman. Um, you're fishing a very, very small area, and you better make sure it's the exact right area if you're going to do that. Now, I may do that if I got a, a small rock pile or the tip of a point or maybe a weed pocket, or maybe a weed uh, clump, where I know that if I put you know three bobbers in a 10 by 10 square, they're all in the right structure. I may do that, but I very rarely do that. The way I fish a bobber is I call it active bobber fishing. And what I do is I get into a good weed bed, polarized glasses and a good hat on, and what I do is I drive around with my bow mount, and I'm, I've got my bobber ready to go, and when I see a hole in the weeds, I simply flip my bobber into that hole. Boom, stop the trolling motor, flip my bobber, boom, it sits in the hole. I may move it a little bit. I let it sit in there 10, 15 seconds, no bite. I pick it up and I move it to the next hole. So I am actively, aggressively, basically flipping uh, my leech and my bobber into pockets in the weeds. I'm picking it up, pop, 
Get, let it sit there 15 seconds, nothing. There's another hole over here. Pick it up, pop. It's in that hole. Now no good. I'm, I'm moving with the trolling motor, another hole. Pick it up, pop. That's what I'm doing. I call it aggressive, active bobber fishing. Uh, you're moving. You're allowing the bobber to do its thing. You're letting it sit long enough to let the leech kind of swim a little bit and let fish know that there's something there, but you're not letting it sit too long and wasting time. Active, aggressive bobber fishing. My favorite way to fish a, a bobber and the second way to do it. Now, the third way is really cool also. We need a little bit of wind to do this. Um, remember, if you've got wind blowing, uh, and we did a weed walleye uh, uh, course um, that uh, uh, we can give you a link to a little bit later, show you how to get that course. We talk about wind direction. Now, wind direction is blowing from deep to the shore. So open water, middle of the lake to the shore, usually concentrates walleyes on the outside deep edge. That's usually what it does. A wind that blows from the shore out to the middle of the lake puts walleyes on flats inside the deep weed edge and they scatter around the flats. So if you're fishing a side of the lake where the wind is coming from deep to shallow, the walleyes are gonna be concentrated mostly on the deep outside edge. So what I'll do is I'll anchor, uh, sometimes even throw an anchor, which is the way we used to do it, still do that occasionally, uh, or just anchor the boat with uh, my anchor mode on my XI-5, usually about 30 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, maybe one or two boat links from the deep weed edge, and I'll simply take a bobber, cast it out about 10 feet short of the weed edge, put it in the rod holder with the bail open, and let the wind slide that bobber, just kind of slowly float it up to the deep weed edge, and at some point it'll go too far, it'll get hung up, you pull it free, reel it up, drop it over, and just let the wind slide it back in again. So that's a great way to fish deep weed edges. So inactive bobbing where you just stop, throw a bobber over and let it do its thing. Active aggressive bobbing where you're moving through a weed bed, dropping that bobber into weed holes, letting it sit for 10, 15 seconds, moving to the next hole. Or third, anchoring up uh, in the wind and letting the wind actually blow your bobber into uh, very distinct deep outside weed edges are the three ways uh, to fish a slip bobber, depending on where the walleyes are located, one of those is going to be the best way every day. Learn how to do all three of them, and you're going to be a great slip bobber fisher. Well, there you go. Everything that you need to get started fishing slip bobbers for weed walleyes. You know, we talked about what a slip bobber was and how it's different than a regular bobber. We talked about some options for slip bobbers of different styles and different sizes that you're going to need. We showed you how to rig a slip bobber with a bobber stop, a bead, a bobber, and a leader. We talked about all of that. We talked a lot about the main line. Make sure you get the right main line and the right leader. We talked about the right rods, reels, and line to use for slip bobbers. We talked about some special tips that are important to remember. We talked about what type of bait and my favorite bait to use on slip bobbers. Then we showed you three ways that you can actually fish a slip bobber and catch walleyes in the weeds. Lots of information there. Go back and review it. Make sure you're ready to go because guys, listen, I don't care if you fish the Great Lakes or an inland lake or a small pond. If you've got weeds and you've got walleye, walleyes are spending a lot of their time in the weeds because it's loaded with bait, has a little bit of shade and gives the walleye some cover. Learn how to fish a slip bobber with a live bait and I promise you, you can get some fish and some really big fish out of those weeds all summer long when other anglers are struggling to get bit. Try it. Slip bobber fishing for walleye, one of my favorite ways to catch them when they're in the weeds.